in progress. What's up, everybody? How we doing, Coach Peden? Hey, doing doing well. How about you? I'm doing good. Just pinning you here. I'm going to start recording here. All right, let's get started with Griffin Strom and Adam Jardy on deck. Griffin, go ahead. Hey, Coach. I'm just wondering, uh, what's it going to be like coaching against Terry Johnson tomorrow? Um, have you had any conversations with him? And how weird, you know, do you foresee it being uh, coaching with him on the other side for the first time? Yeah, I, 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 uh, I haven't put a whole lot of thought into it, to be honest with you. And um, um, it will it will be uh, it'll be a competitive game regardless. Um, obviously, with our relationship, uh, our staff with Terry and having myself having worked with him for total of six years, um, know each other real well. So um, ha haven't put a whole lot of thought into it and no, have not uh, talked to him uh, leading up to the game. And then, you know, how much uh, stock do you put into kind of those those three games you had with Purdue last year, knowing especially that, you know, so many of their key contributors from that team last year are back again for them this year? Or do you pay, uh, pay more attention to, you know, what they've been doing this year and, and where are the biggest differences maybe that you see in those two teams? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question. Um, they're very uh, similar. Uh, Purdue system um, can it can tweak probably a little bit year to year offensively um, but for the most part defensively um, they look they look very much the same as they did last year just because the pieces uh, are all are all there they remain from last year they have so many guys returning so um, they're they're, they're going to be it's going to be a real challenge um, they've got great size um, they've got versatility they're deep and um, you know from a offensive standpoint just attacking them you know we did have um, we had kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum. We we had a very low efficiency game when we played them uh, earlier in the year in Columbus and then more of a higher efficiency game um, in the Big Ten tournament. And um, we'll have to take what we learned from both of those games, apply it um, to, to the game this year. But I see a lot of the same tendencies um, and coverages that they, that they had last year, as you would expect, with, with a lot of the same personnel back. All right, we'll go with Adam Jardy and Colin Gay on deck. Adam. Hey, Ryan, good to see you. Too. Uh, can, can you give us an update on, on Jamari? And is it his foot or, or his ankle? It's his, it's his foot, and, and we're hopeful. Um, he's going to try to practice today, so it'll be a game-time decision. Don't really have any true update there. Um, but um, I think you guys know that have seen us play. Jamari is a really important piece to, to our puzzle. Um, and gives us that experience. Uh, toughness. Um, he leads with his defense, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we'd love to love to have him, but uh, ultimately, his his long term health is most important and going to be most important to us. And having to play without him, and I mean, obviously, like you said, he's had a significant role on this team. As you've analyzed that that game, and, and as you look forward here, what did you see from from Michi, from Malachi, from uh, Cedric? I mean, you, you had a couple of guys that all kind of helped fill that role. Uh, what was it like? I guess kind of going over that film and seeing how you filled in for Jamari and um, getting Michi back. I thought, I thought all three of them did a tremendous job. Um, you know, I, I was, my antennas were up on the freshmen mostly um, because they had never been to the barn, had not played in front of an environment like that. It's a tough place to play. Um, but, but when you look um, post game and you see they both combined for I think 62 minutes um, had six assists combined with one turnover I thought they did a phenomenal job and um, you know, we, we, we got to hope to build, continue to build on that. Obviously Purdue um, presents a totally different challenge um, uh, schematically than, than uh, Minnesota did, but I thought their response, I thought their poise um, and uh, the way that Michi sort of managed the game from a, from a point guard standpoint um, and a lead guard standpoint was, was impressive to me. And uh, you know, we're going to need to keep, keep building on that and, and getting better, improving each time out. All right, we'll go with Colin Gay and Patrick Murphy on deck. Colin. Hey, Ryan. I'm, I'm just curious. I mean, a lot has been said about the your guys' performance on the offensive glass against Minnesota, and I'm curious about how important is a performance like that, especially whether it's, you know, yeah, I mean, on the offensive glass 
heading into a game where that's going to become a lot tougher against Purdue. How, how important was it to kind of see a best case scenario there before you get into you seeing the size that Purdue brings? Sure. You know, and it's not just size. Purdue is so physical. Um, they're very accountable on the glass. They're the, the top rebounding team in our conference. I, you know, I, I know on the defensive side of the ball, for sure, I think they're one of the top two or three offensively as well. But, um, you know, when you play Purdue, um, you better be prepared for, for battle and for war. And we out-rebounded them in the game. Of the three that we played last year, we out-rebounded them in one game, and that was the game we won. So I don't think there's – um, you know, uh, uh, just a coincidence to that. I think that's part of the formula against Purdue, and it has been for years. Um, you got to take care of the basketball, but you have to um, – you got to win the battle on the boards, and that's that's very important. So they're coming off a game where they allowed 12 offensive rebounds. That was the most they've allowed all year too. So you've got this sort of this, this collision uh, where we had our best rebounding night. They had their – on paper, their worst defensive rebounds rebounding night so I'm sure um, their coaching staff is is drawing attention to that at the end of the day it rebounding is effort and and it's a it's will and and uh, I, I was most proud of that the other night I thought our our effort across the board on both sides of the ball was as good as it's been in a while um, and uh, certainly to crash the glass um, we had a lot of rebounds in traffic with two hands uh, we pursued rebounds out of our area. We didn't die on blockouts. Um, all those kinds of things, those things travel. Um, yeah. that, that, that can't be a one night thing. So um, I think that's that's an important going to be an important part of our our growth moving forward. But at the end of the day, again, it comes back to effort. And and when you give effort like that, great things will happen for you. Do you feel like? I mean, obviously, Zed, Kyle, and EJ have all faced. Purdue before so they know what they're getting into is that valuable in this case especially going to Mackey Arena and having with the emphasis on the physicality of the glass do you feel like that's important them kind of having an idea of what they're getting into yes I do I do I think I think most Big Ten games it's important that you have an experience because this is such a this is a league that values experience so much and um, older teams that have these systems that sort of replicate themselves year after year, you know, Purdue, Purdue's DNA and their style of play and formula for winning today is you could, you could say is very similar to what it was 10 or 20 years ago. Um, I think there's differences, but um, at the end of the day, what they hang their hat on, that hasn't changed. So um, facing that for the first time, you're, you're either you're buying into the scouting report or you're going to get taught a lesson real quick. So um, hopeful that that our guys, our new guys, uh, understand that it's a short prep. So we've got to have their full attention here um, in this short window, which we will. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you got to go out there, regardless of where the game's played or who who you're playing against. You got to outplay them. Your effort, your toughness, the physicality that you bring, um, it's going to put you in position to win games in this conference. Thanks, Ryan. Sure thing. All right, Patrick Murphy of Stephen Means on deck, Patrick. Hey, Ryan, good to talk to you. Hey, you too. Uh, EJ got talked about a lot, obviously scoring a thousand points and whatnot, but the other things that he does, and it was very obvious against Minnesota, the offensive rebounds, the passes out of the paint, those type of things. Just what, what do you see when you look beyond the scoring with EJ Liddell? Well, I see, I see, first of all, a guy that values winning at the highest level and his basketball character is it's, it's extremely high. And I think if you've got a guy that, uh, is willing to be coached, uh, values winning, and has that high basketball character, as we would say. Um, I think you're going to be in a position to have a successful team if that's one of your better players. Obviously, EJ is. Um, I think it's no secret we, we play through him in a variety of ways, and uh, we've done that um, you know, through certain guys at, at, at certain times of the year in the last three or four years. But um, you know, in, in order to sort of – for us to be able to do that, you know, he's got to be a complete player. And I think there's times throughout his career where you could say he was a great scorer or EJ was really physical or EJ then could shoot. Uh, you know, last year he, he, he was able to step out and shoot. I think what you're seeing now is the growth and maturation of his game. And he just keeps making the right play. And I said that to him at Minnesota the other night and coming out of a timeout, I said, just keep making the right play, man. I said, you're doing a great job. I think the quality of his passing has really improved. 
Um, he's putting zip on it. He's putting them on time on target. Um, passing is, is such an underappreciated part of, of the game of basketball. So especially from obviously an offensive standpoint. Um, but I think he's made our team so much better this year because uh, of that element and that growth of, of his passing. So um, proud of him. And, and obviously we've got to continue to grow other guys around him. Um, and I think you're starting to see that uh, at certain times, the consistency is, is growing with some of our, our younger guards and our newer guards. And um, it's exciting. We got to keep getting better. All right, Stephen Means, and then we'll go back to Adam for a follow-up. Stephen. Hey, Ron. Uh, obviously, what Jamari brings as a point guard on the offensive end is what he brings to the table, but obviously his best skill set is what he is as a perimeter defender. And given what Purdue's you know, personnel is, guys like Jade and Ivy, um, if he were not to play, I guess what type of you know weapon defensively would you be without and how would you maybe handle some of the things Purdue wants to do on the perimeter without giving too much detail? Down to the game plan, obviously. Yeah, and that's that's probably even a better question for for Jake Diebler. Um, you know, I think Purdue's um, offense is well documented. Um, they they can hurt you in a variety of ways. They've got uh, the most imposing uh, interior player in the country. They've got a Swiss Army knife, uh, Travion Williams. They've got a dead eye shooter, um, and they've got guards and pieces around them. Um, and I, I think what I see, at least when I watch them on television, is I see a team that knows who they are at a high level. And um, they're not trying to be someone or some, you know, a team that they're not. They, they play to their strengths. Um, they know who they are. And it's a, it's a, it's a real challenge to, to stop them. Um, they're talented offensively and have been. Um, but they've played, to, played a lot of games together, too. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a real challenge. I don't know that I look at it. Um, or Jake would look at it just from an individual standpoint, because I think the way we um, prepare and the way we scheme is, is very much more team oriented than um, individual oriented. Obviously there's going to have to be certain guys that take on challenges throughout the game um, and, and stepping up and guarding their personnel. Um, but at the end of the day, we're trying to prevent um, their best players from uh, doing what they like to do. And um, at, 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 at the end of the day, that's a, that's a team effort, not just an individual effort. Thanks. All right, we'll pop back to Adam for a follow-up. Adam. Uh, two, if you don't mind. Um, first, uh, when, when, he, when he's not making shots, we, we've talked so much about Justin Orange recently, but when he's not making shots, what is he doing that, that enables you to keep putting him in the, in the starting lineup and keep giving him minutes? Because I mean, there, there's more to his game than just shooting. But what, what does he do on a night or in a stretch when, he, when he's not making shots? Well, Justin, he, he's a, he is a connector for us out there on the floor, and that's something that you know people watching on television may not appreciate or understand as much. But he knows our system at a high level. Um, he's one of our best communicators out there uh, on the floor defensively. He connects us. Um, he brings us a feeling of stability out there, I think, um, especially when you go on the road, when you've got younger guards. He, he brings a, a calmness to us. Um, and from an offensive standpoint, he affects the gravity of your offense. Um, he pulls defenders with him um, at all times. And, you know, that doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but – I promise you, uh, when you're talking about offensive spacing and um, ways, thinking of ways that you can put your best players in in spots to be successful, um, having a guy like Justin Arns, it does help your offense um, without even uh, you know him making shots. Just the threat of him out there uh, can draw defenders with him. And then um, we. And then in the preseason, I thought it was pretty consistent across the board. You know, this is a different team and, you know, how last season ended didn't, doesn't have any real bearing on, on this year's team. But I do wonder, you're going back to Mackey for the first time um, since last year. Do you think that will, will that be on your minds at all? Like, will you, when you walk back in that building, maybe for the first time, will you flash back to how, how last year ended? Uh, I'm sure it's human nature. You walk through those doors and the memories that you, that you carry from, um, Last March 19th, I mean, I don't think those will ever leave us. Um, but at the end of the day, this is, a, this is a whole different chapter, a whole different year. Um, you know, certainly you'll, it'll, it'll probably ring a bell with you. But do I think that'll have any bearing on tomorrow's game, Adam? To be honest, I don't. Um, but 
you know, hopefully that, that experience has galvanized us in some form or fashion and um, maybe gives us a, a little bit of a, um, you know, a, a mental edge tomorrow or maybe a little extra chip on our shoulder. Um, but I, at the end of the day, I don't think that'll have an impact on tomorrow's game. Thanks, Ryan. Coach, thank you. Oh, sure thing. Good seeing everybody. Appreciate the time. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, guys, have a have a good weekend.